So all you have to do, go to actions, click on deploy to AWS and run the workflow. And whatever changes you have in the API or the new API will be hosted on your domain. Hi, my name is Afzal and you're watching channel Code X. In this video, I will give you a complete walkthrough of server pod installation on AWS. Starting from installation to domain purchase, AWS account setup, GitHub configuration, your CLI setup and the deployment. Everything will be covered step by step. So make sure to watch complete video. It's going to be very informative. So let's get it started right after this intro. All right, so let's talk about some of the prerequisites for server pod hosting. First of all, you need AWS account. You can go to simply this site aws.amazon.com and do a regular sign up. Now, just a disclaimer that it will ask for your card information. So don't worry about that until and unless you are going to use it like a thousand millions of call per day, it's not going to cost you anything. I have already registered so I can tell you with the confidence and it may take like uh, in some cases it take hours, some cases it may take 24 hours. So go ahead and register now so that it's activated as soon as possible. So now that you have account with AWS, next thing you want to install is AWS CLI on your machine. You can go to simply this site and depending on your operating system, either Windows, Mac or Linux, you just hit this command and it will install the CLI for you. And I know that a lot of you may be looking for the way to copy this URL or the command. So don't worry, I have provided link in the description where you can find all the commands and URLs to execute. So next thing you want to install is Terraform. Now Terraform is responsible for managing your server, managing the cluster and whatnot. So if you want to get an idea of Terraform, you can go ahead and watch some videos. But uh, our goal is to install all the prerequisites and get ready with the server pod hosting because we have a lot of things to cover. And the last brick of your installation part is to host your project on a GitHub account. Now it can be public, it can be private, it's your personal preference, but you have to put it on a GitHub so that all the Terraform scripts can run properly. You can use automated script to deploy your changes. It makes life much simpler, you know? A big congratulation on getting your system ready for AWS deployment. Next thing we're gonna do is buy a domain. Now this will cost you a couple of dollars, $4, $5, or depending on the domain you want to purchase. So I have just purchased a simple domain like codexdev.xyz, which is not that costly. It cost around 150 Indian rupees, which is like $2 or less than that. So if you're serious about hosting, if you want to learn something, go ahead and just invest this small amount. And of course you will learn a lot of things while doing all this setup. So let me take a moment and thanks all of my channel members who are contributing Codex on a monthly basis. I really appreciate that. And let's also welcome two of the new members, Kaek Tejseria Dos Anjos and Ocean. I may have pronounced your name wrongly, sorry for that. So welcome to channel Codex and I really, really appreciate your contribution. Thank you so much and let's continue with the video. And you can buy this domain from any site you like, Big Rock, GoDaddy, Squarespace, and whatever you prefer. Now again, we are going to go back to AWS console and there you have to search for route 53. What you have to do is click on hosted zone and create a new hosted zone. In this form, you just have to provide the domain name which you just registered and click on the create zone button. And once your zone is created, you need to expand hosted zone details and copy all the details from name server. Now this information you need to paste on your website from where you have purchased. I know that it's kind of irritating, but trust me, this is just one time setup and at the end, the result you will get will all worth it. So now what we have done so far is linked our domain to AWS account so that it can create subdomains, it can host the code, the server file and redirect it to your domain. And don't you think that writing front-end code in Flutter is much easier than having all this setup, configuration, hosting, and all sort of internet jungle? Let me know in the comment section, what do you think is the toughest, front-end or the back-end? Go ahead, pause the video and write your comment, and then we'll continue with the next part. And now we are into some serious work. We are going to create SSL certificate for our domain. And now it's very easy. We need two of them. First one from US West Oregon 
and the second certificate from US East Virginia. Now the process is very simple. You just have to select the top right drop down and choose the region as US West 2. Request for public certificate, provide the full domain name and add another name to this certificate. This time you will be adding star dot to make it a wildcard so that it can also apply this SSL to your subdomains. Now you got to repeat the same process again by selecting a different region US East Virginia. Request for public certificate, provide the domain, wildcard domain and you got a new certificate. Now one thing to remember that this is a filtered list. So if you select Virginia, you will see the certificate of Virginia. If you select Oregon, you will see the certificate of Oregon. So you are not going to see both of them together. And now with that, you have completed AWS setup. Of course, we need a couple of keys like access key, access ID, some hosted zone ID and all those information later in the video. But that is just key information you have to fetch as a part of a setup you are all done with AWS. Next up, we're gonna move to the GitHub and we'll do the configuration for the already hosted GitHub project. Now, first of all, you have to go to your settings tab and click on secret actions. Inside here, click on new repository secret and name it as server pod passwords. Now, if you're thinking what is going to be the secret for this value, so let me remind you that when you created server pod project you didn't committed one file to the server that's password file inside a config folder so you have to copy everything inside that password file and paste it as a secret value to server pod passwords interesting huh now we gotta create two more secrets and we don't even have the values with us so again we are going back to aws console select your profile click on security credentials and copy the information for access key ID and secret access key. Make a note of these two values and keep it somewhere safe because you're gonna need these values later in the video. And now continuing with the GitHub secrets, we'll add two more keys. The first one will be AWS access key ID and just provide the value you just copied. And second one will be AWS secret access key and you already copied the value. So in total, you got three secrets inside your settings tab, which completes 50% of your GitHub setup. Now we just have to modify one file inside the server project, AWS, Terraform folder. There's a file called config.auto.tfvars. Now this is a Terraform script, so don't worry about rest of the script. You just have to modify four lines and nothing other than that. Now for the values of those four lines, we are going back to AWS console. So head over to route 53 and go to your hosted zone, copy the hosted zone ID and paste it as the value of first field. Now top domain, you already know whatever domain you have purchased, you are going to put it over here. Now for the rest of two keys, certificate ARN and CloudFront certificate ARN, you're going to provide the value from certificate manager inside AWS. So you could have copied those value when you created the certificate, but I wanted you to know where actually we are going to use that information. So just copy the ARN value from US West 2 and US East 1 and paste it inside the respective key inside the Terraform script. Now, how about if I tell you that all of your server configuration is done? You have configured the AWS successfully, the GitHub account and GitHub project is successfully configured to run your scripts and Terraform script. You just now have to do a little bit configuration on the client side in your AWS CLI and Terraform CLI. So let's start with AWS CLI. You have already installed AWS CLI in the beginning. So to configure, give the command AWS configure and it will ask you the access key, secret access, region name and output format for the access key and secret you have already copied the value so just go ahead and paste it over here and done your aws cli is configured similarly we will configure terraform cli for that you have to export aws access key id 
and export AWS secret access key. Both of these value you already have copied. So just go ahead and provide those value here. And also you need to export database password from production. So just go to your password file and copy the database password from production settings. Now let's give a command terraform init to initialize our server script. And then once it is initialized, you can run terraform apply, which will perform all the necessary checks and plan for deployment. And once it asks you the confirmation, just hit yes, so that it will start deploying all the changes, which may take a couple of minutes to gather all the resources. And before you get too excited, let me remind you that we are missing one thing, one last thing, our database, right? So now our server is hosted, we have the subdomain database.domain.com, whatever you purchase. So use any of your favorite tool to connect to this host. The user will be Postgres, database will be server pod and production password you already know. So just connect to it and inside your server project, you have to go to the generated folder and there's something called tables hyphen server pod dot pg sql. These contains all the table required for server pod to run perfectly. So copy the script and run it over here. And if you have created any custom table, so you can copy things from tables dot pg sql and run the script again over here. And that will bring all the tables to your server. Now let's see everything in action. You have to go to your GitHub repo, click on actions, deploy to AWS and just run the workflow and you're all done. Your server pod project is successfully deployed to AWS. Congratulations. That's how you deploy your server pod project to AWS. I know that it has a lot of steps and it's not that easy, but remember that it's just one time setup. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And if this video added any value to your knowledge, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe the channel if you haven't already and press the bell notification so that you get update whenever I post video about Flutter or server pod. Thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next one.